As a cinematic experience, Avatar The Way of Water was like a feast that ends up lasting a bit too long and you're kind of annoyed by it, but also not really because look at all this food you're getting. Our second incursion into the lands of Pandora was arguably more immersive than the first because now that we knew what we needed to know about the Na'vi people, we could just sit back and enjoy their world for what it is. Of course, as the title suggests, Jake Sulla and his family end up migrating from the forest clans of Pandora to the sea clans of Pandora, but while most questions lingering from the first movie were answered in the first few minutes of Way of Water, one question remains unanswered. Where is Turok? Let's dive into that question and see if we can can't find him, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Who is Turok? Just in case your minds needs refreshing, we'll remind you who Turok is and why he was so important to the first film. Turok is a Navi name for the Leonopteryx rex, a rare and particularly dangerous species separate from Pandora's aerial predators, the Ekron. Turok is the Navi language translates to the last shadow, and that's more than just a cool nickname. A Turok does not have a hunter, it is the apex predator of the skies, and so the very last thing that its prey sees before ending up as its meal is its shadow, thus the epithet the last shadow. For the forest clans of the Navi, Turok is a mythical creature, almost because it is rarely glimpsed and makes its home in the fabled Hallelujah Mountains, which is why when Jake Sully tames one in the first film, it's such a significant moment. The Legend of Turok Makto Turok Makto translates into the Rider of the Last Shadow in the Navi language, since Turok is such a deadly mount. Only a handful of people have managed to tame it in the history of the forest people, and each man who has done so has become a legend unto itself. Five Navi have realized the legend of the Rider of the Last Shadow since the days of the first songs. The first Turok Makto was a Navi man called Edentu, who united the forest clans during a great volcanic disaster and became a guiding star star for his people. Four others followed him, with the last known Turok Makto being Neytiri's great-great-grandfather who used the power of the myth to unite the forest clans through a time of great sorrow. The sixth coming of Turok Makto took place when Jake Sully, shunned by the humans for his betrayal and abandoned by the Omatikaya for his nature, decided to prove his loyalty to the people he truly called his own. Jake figured that since Turok was the baddest cat in the sky, he wouldn't expect an aerial assault on himself and maneuvered his Ikran to test his theory. Jake leapt onto Turok and managed to successfully bond with and tame it. Using the legend of the Turok Makto, he regained his favor with the Omatikaya and managed to unite the forests of Pandora against the RDA in the final assault on the Tree of Souls. There, Turok Makto's leadership and loyalty to the Omatikaya manages to send the sky people back to their homes with their tails between their legs, and Jake Sully becomes the chief of the Omatikaya, having proven his worth. That is basically where the first movie ends, but when Way of Water begins, it's pretty evident that Turok is no longer Jake's mouth as he has switched back to using his Ikran once again. So what happened to Turok? Well, he might have just gone back home. Turok might have returned to the Hallelujah Mountains or another aerial retreat after Avatar 1. The purpose of Turok Makto was to lead the Navi through a great sorrow and see them safely to the other side. Quaritch and his RDA team represented that sorrow during the sixth coming of Turok Makto, and once they were driven back, there was no longer a need for the last shadow to protect the Omatikaya. Jake released Turok to the winds and he has not reappeared yet because Way of Water was almost entirely devoid of Ikran except for the opening scenes and every scene Quaritch was in. So where is Turok and can he even be considered free? Because if you were paying attention to the first film, the concept of Sahelu or the bond is one that the Navi take extremely serious. Jake is told that once he bonds with an Ikran, that bond is cemented for life, meaning no other Navi can bond with it. We can assume the same concept applies to the bond that the Navi Navi create with every creature of Pandora. The spirit bond between the Metkayina and the Tulkun is a great example of this. So even if Jake lets him go, it's hard to call Turok free for he will always be bonded to Jake through the Sahelu. Unless the logic behind his departure is the same as the Avatar games where Abel Rider became Turok Makto in all but name because 
he never officially bonded with Turok. Considering that Jake did something similar, it is possible that another Turok Mokto will emerge soon enough because Avatar 3 and 4 are being developed as we speak. When an animal is released from its bondage to another, its first instinct is to seek out home, so it's possible that Turok just returned to its lair up in the clouds of Pandora and is spending his life contently feeding on Ikrin and stretching his great wings. But if the ending of The Way of Water was anything to go by, it seems likely that we might see the last shadow ride once again. Jake Sully and his family might have moved to the Sea Clans, but Miles Quaritch lives still, and he will have learnt a lesson or two from his failures in the second movie. We can expect him to return with a far more genocidal plan in mind for the final two installments of the Avatar Saga, and Turok might be a part of it. Because if you think about it, mastering Turok would be the perfect way to destroy the Na'vi from within. Their fate and culture would compel them to follow Quaritch, and if that happens, well, we don't need to finish that sentence, do we? So for those of you who missed the bright red specter of death in Avatar 2, don't worry, James Cameron might not be done with the myth of Turok Makto just yet. Marvelous Verdict We don't know about you, but not seeing Turok in the way of water was a bit of a bummer for us. He was an integral part of the first movie, and yes, his impact was acknowledged in the second as well. But we would have loved it if he was as well. Still, for those of you who loved the four wind Caraxes of Pandora, you can hold on to the hope that Avatar 3 and 4 bring him back with a vengeance. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe.